Hey, welcome back, Boatheads. I know it's been a while. If you haven't already, please subscribe and ring that little bell icon so you'll see updates as I post them. Today I'm introducing an exciting new build. First, I'd like to go over my thought process for this build, and then I'll go over some more details. This boat is going to be unique, functional, and a lot of fun. You've probably heard guys like James Cameron, other explorers, as well as scientists and philosophers talk about the mysterious world that exists just beyond our shoreline. It may be that the depths of the ocean hold secrets that rival those held in the stars above us. This underwater world has fascinated countless humans for eons. I am fascinated as well, but on a smaller scale. It seems that most of my interests are small versions of big concepts. I know my limits as far as submarine building is concerned, so I'm not nearly as interested in the depths of the Marianas Trench as I am in the world that exists in the lakes and small bodies of water that are just outside my front door. Although I will not be discovering anything new, I will be immersing myself in a beautiful world that is hidden from the gaze of the human eye. If I was to choose to be an animal for a day, I think I would choose an animal that can see underwater and on land like a seal or a walrus or something. As the saying goes, a fish doesn't know water. If you observe these animals, you'll see that they can see both worlds, and both worlds are demystified in a way. This is a big part to me, demystifying the unknown. I remember as a kid going to the Grand Coulee Dam in central Washington state. I remember looking at the water on either side of the dam and being enamored with what could possibly be going on under the surface. On one side there's hundreds of feet of water and hundreds of feet of concrete wall with intakes for large hydroelectric generators. On the other side there's a slanted wall of concrete of unfathomable scale. When I would look at the turning surface of the water swirled and bubbly, by the scariest force I had heard to that point, the mighty undertow. <clears throat> Looking at that area of the water still gives me goosebumps to this day. What in the world is going on under there? What would a fish see under there? You may be thinking, hey silly boathead, why don't you just scuba dive? That is something I would love to do, but until my kids are much older, I don't have the desire to take the risk, nor do I have the time or money to engage in that or submarines safely. To be honest, I believe there's much more exciting stuff going on in less than 30 feet of water where the sunlight can reach. There's more plant life and fish life in this area than 100 feet below the surface, where incidentally there are far greater threats to my life and health. Taking all this into account, you should be able to better understand my rationality behind this build. So now I'd like to introduce to you my latest build, the Walrus, Water Aquatic Life Research Under Surface. That's just something I came up with after I picked the name, so it's pretty weird. I know that. My first attempt at this dry snorkeling idea, meaning I get the same view as snorkelers get while I'm not getting wet or tired, resulted in glorified glass bottom boat with too many gadgets to list. It was supposed to be similar in concept to a semi-sub, a craft that gives an underwater view without fully going underwater. It was fun, but large, clunky, and was much more like a submarine that doesn't go underwater. I had planned on lying prone with my head in a glass bowl below the surface, but the boat was too small and I wound up needing to sit so I could see and avoid obstacles above the surface. To make up for the lack of view through the window, I added a bunch of cameras that would be lowered under the surface and shown on an LCD screen inside the cab. There may be use for this in the future, but it was too much dinking around with stuff to make it fun. I'm taking what I learned from that project and applying it to this build. It needs to be launchable by one person, it needs to be set up to be driven while in the prone position. The pilot needs to be able to see above and below the surface easily without sitting up. So this boat will have a polycarbonate clear floor that curves up to the top of the boat. The pilot will only have to tilt their head to see boats after looking down at the fishy fish and silly little plants. After the water line has been established and the need 
is confirmed. Windows will also be added to the sides that will give view of both above and below the surface of the water. The controls will be movable and usable from any location and position within the craft. The marine battery that will power a Minn Kota electric trolling motor will be located in the back of the craft and situated in a way that will allow the pilot to sit on it while driving to the exploration location. The pilot will be partially sitting on their knees and will need headroom to easily transition to the prone position. I will likely add plenty of cushioning for comfort as well as warmth as I would like to go on the water during the transition seasons because this is when the lakes are the calmest due to fair weather skippers not being on the boats making choppy water. I'm super excited about this project and cannot wait to go exploring. If you would like to join me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and share this with any of your friends that may be interested. Also, join me and other boat heads on our Facebook page, Mini Boats and More. Thank you for watching, and gosh darn it, go build a boat!